Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome to our video tutorial on Objective-C classes and methods. This is for people who have some programming background but want a quick crash course on the syntax for creating classes in Objective-C. In Objective-C, when you create a class, it's actually created across two different files. There's a .h file and a .m file. The difference is the .h file, you can think of that as the public interface to the class. This is where you publish the methods and the properties that you want other classes to be able to know about and call about your class. So let's look over this syntax one line at a time. So at the top, you typically have to import some other header files that have some definitions your class needs. For example, if your class B uses another class A, you need to import A's header file so you know about that class and what methods it has and so on. Next, you use the at interface keyword. That's pretty much saying, hey, I'm creating a class here. And then you pass in whatever you want to name the class and then you put a colon, and then you put whatever its superclass is. In Objective-C, you always have to derive from something. And if there's nothing in particular that you want to derive from, then you could derive from NS object, which is the base class in Objective-C. Inside the at interface, you can put some stuff, we'll get to that, but when you're done, you put at end. So inside the at interface and at end, that's where you define your public methods and your public properties. Now, we're not gonna talk about properties in this video. That's gonna come in a future video, but just keep that in mind. Um, but we will talk about methods. This is where they go. Now let's look at the .m. So the first thing you typically do is you import your header file, and you might import some other headers that you need to know as well at this point. Then you have at implementation, and this is saying now you're implementing this class and you give your class name, and then you're gonna put all the implementation of your methods here. When you're done, you put at end at the end of the file. Now there's something else you can do here that's uh, a little more advanced, but I wanna show it to you because it's very common these days. You can actually define some uh, new private properties and private methods by this syntax here. The way it works is it's pretty similar to what you did in your header file, except notice instead of putting the colon and superclass like you did in the header file, instead you put two parentheses after the class name. What this is actually doing is you're creating here something called a class extension, which we'll get to in a separate video. But you don't need to worry about that now. Just know that this is the syntax you use if you want to define private methods, private properties inside your class. You don't have to declare methods in a particular order in Objective-C. So declaring the private methods here isn't really necessary, but defining private properties here is, and we'll see an example of that in a bit. One more thing I wanna show you, you can actually define private instance variables inside your class if you'd like. You put an open curly brace after your implementation's class name, and then you can list out your private instance variables here, for example, a int uh, my int or a care my care could go here. Again, we'll, we'll cover the difference between instance variables and properties in the next video. I bet you're dying for an example at this point, so what example should we use? We're gonna make a date calculator. The reason for this is when I first met my wife, she was a freshman in college and I had graduated from college, so she was only 18 and I think I was like 22 or 23. And I was worried if there was too much of an age gap between us and if it was too creepy for me to date her. Luckily in XKCD I found this great little algorithm that says it's okay to date someone as long as they're not your age divided by two plus seven. So I ran home to Python, wrote a little script, plugged her my age in, and I was good to go. But I'm sure you may be wondering, hey, you know, Hayden Perriette from Heroes is pretty cute. Or for the females out there, you might say, hey, I really have always liked Sean Connery. Is he too old for me to date? So you're in luck. We're going to make a class for that. Okay, so let's create a new project with the iOS application, single view application template, which is a good bare bones project to start from and we'll name this date calculator. Now leave everything else default and I'm just gonna save this to the desktop. So what I wanna do is I want to create a new class. So Xcode has some built-in templates for this. You just go to File, New, File, and you can choose iOS Cocoa Touch Objective-C class. It's a good starting point. And this lets you specify the class and the subclass. So we're gonna name the class date calculator. And we don't have anything in particular we want a subclass from, so we might as well just uh, leave it to NS object. And it says, where do you wanna save it? We'll just save it to the default spot in the project folder. So let's look at what 
Xcode has generated for us. It's actually a really good starting point. So first of all, it has a import for foundation.h. That's one of Apple's header files, which includes a bunch of handy classes. And then there's the at interface keyword that says, hey, I'm creating a class here. And the name of the class is date calculator. And you have to put a colon. And then after the colon, you say what class you're subclassing, which is NS object in this case. This right here is where we put the methods, public methods. And then we put the at end afterwards. So this think of the header file as basically broadcasting what methods that are available inside your class. When you actually want to implement them, you put them in the .m. So I twist to that. The first thing you do is typically import the header file. Then you say at implementation, the name of your class. And inside here, this is where you're going to implement the methods. OK, now that we've created a class, we want to create some methods inside the class. But how does the syntax for that work in Objective-C? So to me, getting used to the method name syntax was one of the weirdest things when transitioning from other languages. I came from a C and a Java background. So, but once you get it, I think you'll really like it because it actually makes your code much easier to read. So let's go over how it works here. OK, so on the far left, we have you put either a dash or a plus. This is saying whether it's an instance method or a class method. So the difference is the instance method, you're calling it on a particular instance of a class, so you have access to all of the properties on the class and the data on the class. But the class method, you're not calling it on a particular instance, you're calling it on the class itself. So you can't do anything that involves properties or instance variables at that point. Most of the time, you're going to be using dash for instance methods. Next, in parentheses, you put the return type of what the method's going to return. For example, you know, a character, an int, a, another object, or so on. Next, you put the first part of the method name. And this is where it gets a little weird because you can have actually uh, multiple parts of a method name in Objective-C. And then you would have your parameter type that you would pass in, so it could be any, any particular type, and then your name of the parameter. And then this area in gray here, the method name part, parameter type, and parameter name. This can repeat for multiple parameters that your method might take. So let's take a look at a couple examples. First one is a simple method that takes no parameters at all. So you just put a dash, in parentheses you put the return value, and then you put the name of the method. Here's an example of one that takes a parameter. So after the first part of the method name, you put a colon, the, the type of the first parameter, the name of the first parameter. And then you just repeat this for as many parameters as you might need. So here's a method, and the way you would describe this method is you would call it, do it with a colon b colon. And uh, it takes two parameters named a and b. OK, now let's add a few methods to our date calculator based on what we just learned. So right now I'm looking at datecalculator.h, the header file. And in between the at interface and the dot end, that's where we're going to declare the methods. So let's start with the first method. I want a method that will let you set his age, you know, the his and who's dating, and then we'll do the her uh, later. So it's going to be a uh, instance method, so we want the, da the dash, and then it will return nothing. If you want to return nothing, you put void. That's a special type that means uh, you're not actually returning anything. And then we'll call this set his age colon, because it's going to take one parameter. That parameter is going to be a float, and we're going to name this parameter his age. So that's the setter for his age. Let's make a getter too. So the getter will return his age. So it's going to return a float. And we'll call it his age. Now we need the method where we can pass in the age of the girl and see if the girl can date you know, this guy. So we put the dash and we say it's going to return a true or false. So that's a bool. And should he date if her age is. And then we pass a float for her age. OK, so that's it for the header file. So what I want to do is I want to copy these three methods here. I'm going to switch over to datecalculator.m, and I'm going to paste them in there. And to implement a method, you just use two curly braces, and inside there you write the code that implements each of these methods. So in order to implement set his age and his age, we're going to need a private instance variable in order to keep track of his age. So you remember the syntax to do that. To make a private instance variable, you put a open curly brace after date calculator. And inside here, you can list out all your private instance variables. So we want one for his age. And what I like to do is when I make a private instance variable, I like to prefix it with an underscore. And actually, this is the convention Apple uses too. So if you use this, you're in good, um, good company. 
So uh, it just makes it really clear to me that when I see an underscore, I know it's an instance variable. So now that we have our instance variable, we can say his age equals the his age passed in. And similarly to return his age, we just return his age. Okay, so those were pretty simple. As for this conversion here, we're gonna use the XKCD algorithm. So we say min age to date equals his age divided by two plus seven, straight from the comic. And then we return is his age greater than the min age to date. If it's greater than min age, or sorry, her age greater than the min age to date. If it's greater than the minimum age, then we're good. Otherwise, uh, we're not good. Okay, so once you've created a method, you might wonder, well, how do I call these methods? Well, the first thing is you have to have an object to call the methods on. And the typical pattern for creating an object in Objective-C is you allocate memory for an object by calling the alloc method, and then you call the init method on that allocated object. Now, notice this is another weird thing about syntax with Objective-C. If you're coming from other languages background, you're probably used to calling methods with parentheses. In Objective-C, you use brackets instead. So, going in the innermost brackets here, you're calling on the object class name, you're calling the alloc method. The result of that returns an object. On that returning object, you then call the init method. And here's an example of calling the methods that I showed you earlier. So you have an open bracket, you put the object you're trying to call a method on, and then you give the name of the method, and if it takes any parameters, you pass those in with colons. And uh, so look at the third example. That one takes two parameters, so you put my object, the first part of the method name, colon, the first parameter, the second part of the method name, colon, the second parameter. Now this is actually, this actually works in Objective-C through a technique called message passing. We're not going to get into that in this video, but just be aware of that as you're reading other documentation on the subject. And one special thing about the way this works is if you call a method on a nil object, it doesn't crash, unlike other languages. So you don't constantly need to be littering your code with if my object is not equal nil, like you need to do in a lot of other languages. So that's actually it for the class. Now all we need to do is test it out. So switch to appdelegate.m. There's this method here, application did finish launching with options. That's the thing that gets called when the app first starts up. So it's a good place to try this out. So the first thing we need to do is import our new class, datecalculator.h. And now this uh, class knows about the other class. We can say datecalculator calc and to create a class, remember new date calculator alloc in it. And then let's set his age. So we're going to use my age as an example. So set his age to I'm 34. So I plug that in. And then we're going to see if I can date Hayden. All right. So should date equals calc. Remember to call a method, open bracket, name of the uh, class you're calling a method on, and then the name of the uh, method. So should he date if her age is, you'll see that Xcode will fill in uh, will automatically find things, even on your own classes for you with auto-completion. It's really nice. And when you'll see me do this all the time. When I find something I like, I just hit return and it fills it in for me, saves me some typing. So should he date if her age is 24? That's how old Hayden is. And uh, if I should date her, then I'll say it's okay to date Hayden. Else. And that's it. Now run this. And sadly, it says you shouldn't date Hayden, you old man. All right, that's it for this video tutorial, but I want to leave you guys off with a challenge. So what I want you to do is create a class called Temperature Converter, and I want you to create a single method on it called Degrees to Fahrenheit. It should take a float of degrees Fahrenheit as a parameter and return a float, which is the converted degrees to Celsius. And then you can use this code that you see here, put it in your application delegate to test out your method. So you can see here it creates an instance of the temperature converter. It calls the degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, passing in a value of 80 degrees. And uh, it should return the degrees Celsius, and then it logs out those two values. So to implement this, you're going to need to know the formula. Here it is. Uh, this is the formula for how to convert degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. And to test it, 80 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 26.67 degrees Celsius. 
Now I'll let you know there's a little gotcha with this. If you're not careful, you might get zero return from your method. And this is due to the way that integers and float work. So if you run into this trouble, you can either look at the, the solution to see what happened there, or you can go look at our other video tutorial on floats, and that will give you a hint as to why, what you might have done wrong there. Uh, one last thing I wanted to leave you on is you might want to check out the Objective-C cheat sheet that we have linked in the resources if you've forgotten any of the syntax for creating methods and so on. Uh, it's just a handy way when you're first getting started. That's it for this video's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.